Welcome everyone. We're here again with our Love Begins With Me documentary film project. And today we have a special friend guest, Beth Christo, who's going to share her understanding of unconditional love, how she came to the awareness of love, and how she's brought it into her life as a practical application. So welcome, Beth. It's great thank, to have you here. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. So where do we begin? The journey of love. <laughs> good question. Good question. Uh, obviously, since we've known you, we've had lots of discussions around unconditional love, and you've had some experiences with uh, very tangible experiences of unconditional love. But maybe you'd like to tell uh, the viewing audience kind of how you've gone, come to this point through life from childhood forward, and maybe some of the background story that led to some of the experiences you've had in the last few years. Okay. Um, well, you. It's one thing to hear unconditional love and, and say that you believe in it, but when you really start experiencing what it can do in your life, it's a totally different thing. When you really get it, it's a totally different thing. And I kind of think that you helped me really get it in one particular case. I had, um, had an issue with my mother for my entire life. We were just like oil and water, didn't get along no matter what I did. Even as an adult, after being away from her for years, I would say, you know, I'm not going to let her push my buttons, I'm not going to let it happen. And I'd walk in the door and it would happen. <laughs> and I was like, no matter what I did, it was just... Um, well, what were some of the experiences? I mean, you, you'd walk in that door and she'd push your buttons, but what did it create? Anger, animosity, fighting? Anger, um, resentment, animosity. She'd say really mean stuff that, you know, really had no purpose. I was like, whoa. So there was, you know. Um, so then you felt less than and you felt unempowered. Right. And, and Out in the world, I could be fine, professional woman, go home, back to being a two-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe acting like a two-year-old. <laughs> but um, then I don't even know what happened specifically through our... Um, I guess it's a role play magic mirror. Um, my daughter was here and basically you got me to face myself and decide to love myself and forgive my mother for whatever it was that caused her to be the way she was. And um, it was a really neat experience for both my daughter and I and by me changing the way I interacted with my mother, she eventually changed and it was like life changing because she said some of the same things, but it didn't have that impact on me. And she took notice of it and then gradually changed the way she treated me. And my daughter seeing all this, it had an impact on her as well. So you mentioned two-year-old, you mentioned childhood. Clearly there were imprints from a very early age, certain experiences that caused you to begin to, shall we say, rebel, react, mm -hmm. respond, um, find some way to somehow participate or, you know, be the, the daughter to the mother, somehow honor the mother, but at the same time you knew that something was mm -hmm. not right. You weren't, you weren't being uplifted by her commentary approach or what she would say. So that must have then carried forward in your teenage years, your adult years, and obviously as you said the whole life, you came to a point where you had a specific experience, but clearly there were a lot of events that were leading up to that because you have spent a lot of years in your own journey, mm -hmm. self-reflective, self-awareness. I'm sure forgiveness wasn't new to you and I'm sure you used it various ways. No, but that was like, um a mountain that I couldn't quite climb myself. It, you know, I, I understood the importance of forgiveness and loving yourself and um, loving others, but it really, it took a lot to get me there to the point where I'm almost like, you know, I'll do whatever it takes. <laughs> I got to stop this because it was impacting other parts of my life. So, um, and again, it's, it, it was just a little, it was a moment in time when it's like everything changed. It was phenomenal. Um, just realizing that 
I could forgive her all by myself without her participation. So you didn't need her forgiveness specifically. You really needed to forgive yourself and holding and bottling up these resentments, angers, frustrations for exactly. years. Exactly. It was totally up to me to not play that game anymore and forgive myself and not buy into what she was saying. And when I did that, um, she noticed, other people noticed. <laughs> so it was As we've since known since that particular time period of your life, there's been a cascading effect and lots of different things have happened, but most particularly, obviously, the relationship with you and your mother mm -hmm. transformed really 180 degrees. I mean, it really went a completely different direction as a result. Absolutely. I was able to look at her like um, a person instead of an adversary and really have a relationship with her. So it was, it was very, it was a good healing process for both of us. Reflecting back on that particular time period, Clearly, you could have just kept going on, you know, your mother, through your mother's passing, eventually your passing, and really never taken any particular uh, effort on your part to make a change. What, what made you really want to change? Like, at some part of you said, I know what this is, I don't know how I'm going to fix it, mm -hmm. but some part of you obviously wanted to give up the game, give up the drama, mm -hmm. give up the conditioned life, as it were, the conditioned love. Um. You know, you want to fix things before people pass. And I really wanted to, you know, get rid of that part of myself that had the anger and kind of release her. So, that so was it. you wanted to heal right. your relationship with the mother before you right. would have passed as a woman. Right, because I don't want to, um, once she's passed, have that memory of her. I didn't want to be 10 years down the road remembering that part of her and that part of our relationship. And now I don't. So, And because of an experience like this, I'm sure you look around and you see a lot of other um, women, but mm -hmm. women and men, younger, older, it really doesn't matter, where they're, they're just staying locked into the drama and it's like neither side will budge. What would you say to people? Is it worth budging? Because clearly you had to go through a Absolute, metamorphosis. Absolutely. You know, it's 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 hard to actually get to that point where you're saying that whatever I have to do, I need to forgive this person and forgive myself and move on. Absolutely. It changed my life. It changed, actually it even changed my relationship with my daughter and I. We had a great relationship, but now we have a better understanding of kind of generational forgiveness and, and how we're all connected. And um, it's made me a better person and made me understand other people and um, have more empathy for other people and I see other people in my situation with those relationships that you know here's someone that you're really supposed to love and who's supposed to love you and there's this this constant anger and resentment and it's like oh just fix it <laughs> please just fix it it'll feel so good <laughs> you you went through childhood and you you have a sister and of course you have children since then, you look upon it now and, and realize that by carrying uh, carrying the, the resentment, the, the, the reaction, the, the causal pain that every time you run into your mother, I mean, she, she did the best she knew how. We can say this mm -hmm. now. Yeah. We can say this now, we're looking back, like, obviously she did the best she knew how. She, if she would have known how to do different, she would have done different, but she was a product of her familial lineage and the, mm -hmm. the generations upon generations and in a way um, something sparked inside of you that realized that you wanted to change the programming of the generation because you of course didn't want to pass it along because you were clearly seeing evidence of how you were mm -hmm. affected everybody else and particularly when you got around your mother but even the 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 collective baggage that even when you were thousands of miles away from your mother who you were in those moments was still a product of your your imprinted, your, your own right. particular reaction to what had happened in childhood and forward. Um, and you obviously started to see your impact more clearly. So the clarity, would you say this really what you, you started to notice that you weren't, you were doing the best you knew how, however you knew you could do better. Right. I knew there was a way to fix it. And so I started looking for that way never dreaming that it was me who had to do it 
and it wasn't really that hard. It was just reaching that point where I could say, you know, I forgive you and I forgive myself and and obviously this was not an intellectual experience for you. You couldn't oh, just, no. it wasn't a cast off, I forgive you, can, you. No, you can know all these things and know the right words and say the right words and does nothing. It was all, it was like emotional. Um, like I said, I've, I've thought about it for over a year. How do you explain exactly what happened? I don't know. <laughs> it just did. And it was, it's like, wow, I wish it had happened when I was 16. I would have had a different life, but I'm glad that it happened. And as we know, you know, a lot of people that have known you have seen a, a dramatically different you as a result since mm -hmm. that time period, which brings us back to why we have launched this whole Love Begins With Me documentary film project anyways, because we do realize that it, this is about self-responsibility. This is about claiming our lives, coming from that love, coming from that forgiveness, really, you know, going within and saying, you know, I cannot continue to blame everybody outside of me and I, I don't need to react. They, they can continue on the way they are. It's the me that has to change, which is why we feel well, love begins with me is how we really heal ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then in doing that, we go out and create a different world, a different reality to heal others. And when you change, it can't help but change those around you. And that was the thing that I noticed. I was able, better able to deal with other people as well because I could apply the same thing to them. You know, they're doing the best they can. You know, it's nothing personal. Um, and send them love and light and... Would you say in a way, uh, you were heading to, in your life path, the destiny was that you were going to somehow resolve this, and thankfully you did while your mother was still alive. Um, would you say kind of now in retrospect that a bigger surprise wasn't just that you healed yourself, that your mother because you no longer got your buttons pushed, the, her interaction with you energetically became something different and that she in fact started to shift mm -hmm. and, you, and not only did you give yourself uh, the blessing, forgiveness, and the, the understanding of unconditional love and the application, a direct application, but in fact, without even trying to imply or trying to get your mother to get it, mm -hmm. just by you changing, you created a space for her to, for the first time in perhaps her life to actually make Right. A change in her own awareness and consciousness. No, she absolutely felt it. She, um, she even said to me one time, you know, you're weird. <laughs> like, thank you. But she noticed it and started to react to it. And by me letting go of that, she could eventually let go of it. It wasn't immediate, um, but she did let go of it. And so I feel like we both were freed by that. And as you've shared your story about your mother over this, obviously she even seemed to become more peaceful Absolutely. and closer to her transition. She was, she herself seemed mm -hmm. more relaxed and more peaceful and more um, okay with herself, as it were. Mm -hmm. and yeah, to know that you can go out without um, that anger and disappointment from other people is good. So. Uh, to share with the audience, the experience that Beth is referencing is something that, that we had the opportunity to do um, rather spontaneously, but the right particular moment, the right energetics all coming together, uh, daughter visiting, them visiting us, and us having conversation. And of course, we had been perhaps laying the groundwork, all of us <laughs> leading up to this, but it was the right moment, um, and, and everybody played their part beautifully, spontaneously, unexpectedly, in a, in a grand transformation. Um, was undertaken and all of this happened a distance away from uh, Beth's mother. In fact, I, as far as I know, you really never, you never really said anything to your mother about your actual experience. You just simply shifted, <coughs> changed, embraced forgiveness, mm -hmm. really let her go, did the unconditional love, yeah. and then started to experience her, her differently. Right. You never tried to change her, you never tried to get her to understand, there's I'd, nothing to say. Yeah, I didn't, well, one, she would not have understand she would not have understood even if I could have explained what happened. Um, she would have thought I was absolutely crazy. Um, and then I really didn't think there was any way to change her. There was no point in it. But by me changing, she took notice and changed. So it really was, as you had a different relationship with yourself, your relationship with her evolved. It really right. changed, so, it grew. It, it went beyond the confines of a lifelong, of one particular 
paradigm as it were. And I think it kind of healed my whole family because they saw, you know, we were like the infamous fighters. So when when they saw us kind of being friends and together, they all took notice of, wow, how can this happen? I mean, it's like black and white. <laughs> so it was definitely noticeable and all of them noticed it. And I think um, are kind of envious of that healing. And again, over time, we, we've had opportunities to talk with you over the years since that, that transformation, that inner transformation uh, happened. You've also indicated that not only, I mean, the, the relationship with your mother changed, the relationship with your daughter changed, um, you know, the very specifics around this particular aspect of, of a healing that you had. You've also indicated numerous times, like, the impact not only on those around you, but just the way you view life has changed rather dramatically. I mean, everything, everything, everything changed because when you really see firsthand, personally, mm -hmm. that you can change everything by what you do inside yourself and your heart, um, that gives you a lot of personal power, and you do start to look at people and problems and life in general differently because you know you have the opportunity to change something that's not right. And, and in this really you, you did an act of self-love as it were. You, you loved yourself enough to go into the deepest of wounds and say, I want something more. I know that I can, mm -hmm. I can heal this in me. And it isn't something I have to expect out of somebody else. In fact, in, in a way, part of the discussion we were having that particular day was the very fact that you had never really heard your mother say that she loved you, and, and mm -hmm. you finally realized, as it were, in the conversation that you may never, that the one that needed to hear it was you. You needed to hear it for right. yourself. The self-love was you first and foremost loving yourself, being, becoming your own best friend, and in doing that, it, I know it's changed your, mm -hmm. your business attitude, the, how you interact with the community, you know, certainly your family, um, your coworkers, everything. It, it, it's had this blossoming effect where you you seem to be the go-to person for peace and equanimity and and people wonder why like especially those that knew you prior <laughs> because i'm sure that that some of the the angers and frustrations that that had developed through the interaction with your mother i'm sure showed up in other aspects of your life and a lot Absolutely. of that just kind of went mm -hmm. away as part of a whole energetic package right no it, it definitely um like i said people noticed and they really it's something they would never have expected us to be able to achieve for sure. And um, I never expected it, but it was absolutely worth it. And um, I'm only sorry that it didn't happen sooner, but I'm so grateful that it happened. So with all of this um, experience, direct experience, I'm sure we've asked you various times the, do you love yourself unconditionally? And I'm, I, and imagine now, after all these years, you have a, a different resolve in how to answer that. Yes, that I do. For yourself. Yes, I do. It, you know, when you first asked me that, it was difficult to say. I mean, you say, yes, I do. Of course I do. But again, there's a difference in saying it and really understanding oh, yeah. and feeling it. And then um, being able to share that with other people. Because when you love yourself, you really can give to others. And it's not taking anything away from you. By loving myself and being okay with myself, I was able to let my mother have her issues and not affect me. And through that, we both were able to heal. So, Which, again, we're a mother, you as a mother, you having a daughter, you're, you've already indicated you've had a, a shift in your relationship with your daughter do you kind of also attribute that to the fact that in loving yourself unconditionally as a mother, you also realized that, yes, I'm a mother and I'm supposed to love unconditionally, but in fact, you had a lot of conditions say in your daughter mm -hmm. because you, in fact, had what you perceived a lot of conditions imposed upon you. It's really conditions you accepted right. and you reacted and, and kind of formed a life path with, but your your experience now with your daughter is, I know from firsthand, so much more uncondi genuinely unconditional. You 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 allow her to blossom mm -hmm. in ways that, in you know, 
there was more control, perhaps. Or you were perhaps more like your mother for many years <laughs> as you tried to be a different mother. But Which in, fact, in the past, I would have really gotten upset about that. But, you know, no, it's true. And, and without realizing it, we, re we repeat those things that we've learned. So, so yeah. as you've let go of the expectations of you, you've now been able to, to allow your daughter, in this case, to make her own choices her own way. And, and you, one of the things I've experienced with, I know you don't worry about her the way you used to worry no, about her. No, because I know she, you know, she's in control of her own life. She'll do the right thing. And all I want her is to be happy. And also, I'm grateful that she was there to kind of see what happened with me because she saw the relationship that I had with my mom, which wasn't pleasant, but she was able to see that it is possible to fix that, to heal it. So, you know, hopefully she never has a relationship like that in her life, but if she ever came across it, she would know she has the power to fix it. So kind of taking that point, I, I go back to your <laughs> childhood, which is kind of cute because in, in your mother's position with whatever, um, you know, understanding she had about life, she did do the best she knew how and obviously she was striving to um, not control you but wanting to hopefully bring out the best of in you mm -hmm. and and you've been really more of an independent soul as your your own daughter is more of an independent soul so it is kind of interesting that generationally there wasn't as much as many dissimilar points initially but by doing this you actually Probably. retroactively you know, healed your relationship with the generation before you, which would be your mother, which of course would have helped heal even her moments of generational to her mother and so on and so forth. There would have been mm -hmm. some, as we say, kind of a, a cascading experience, but then by shifting your energy, you've also been able to shift the energy for your daughter, which places her in a different position so that when she chooses to have children, she will be coming from a different frame of reference because she has seen right. this transition. No, no, it's very good. Um, it is, I, hadn't, I actually hadn't even thought about that, that I don't worry about her as much. And I don't kind of like prejudge what she's going to do anymore. Um, and that's got to make us a happier relationship. And it's, Funny, I never thought of it that way until you were talking about um, my childhood and the roles and you do have those roles in the back of your head even though you don't realize you do and you're still trying to live up to what mom expected until you let that go and then you can be yourself so bigger than what happened within me, I see now it's what happened with Shannon. So. Which was? I'm not doing that to her. So. Which is really what you wanted to do differently, which yeah. really every mother so, kind of does. Well, why did you get teary with that? Because I just going? realized it. You know, you think X, Y, Z happened and then you're like, wow, you know? So do you forgive yourself for things that you may or may not have done correctly? Yes, because I did the best I could. And I'm really happy that day happened, you know? So yeah. So you're proud of Shannon? Very. You're proud of Scotty? Yes. Proud of yourself. yourself. Proud of yourself. Yes. <laughs> yes. And proud that um, I can finally let them be whoever they are. You know, without constantly trying to control everything. So yeah. Proud of your mother that she actually gave you the contrast to show you what you didn't want. Yeah. That she had the courage to be who she was, so that you could see that you could be different. Absolutely. No, she gave me one of the biggest gifts, you know, when she finally, almost, when she passed, she did apologize and she um, said she regretted being afraid all the time. And uh, so that was something I could, you know, learn from forever. I don't want to be there. So. You don't want to spend your life being afraid. No. So sometimes I'm afraid and I'm like, 
screw it, I'm doing it. <laughs> I've seen that what I do can affect all the people around me. So that means that what each person does in their own life affects a lot of people, which affects a lot of people. So by doing, by loving yourself unconditionally in your own life, one at a time, it can affect everybody. So yeah, that's the whole point. Unconditional love, loving yourself. So that's it in a nutshell. So we've talked a lot about your mother and we've often kind of made her the, the <laughs> focal point of the issues, but in fact, maybe things weren't as rosy with your father because while you were having your experience with your mother, your father may not have actually been as capable of supporting you in the ways that you might have needed him to at the time because he in fact was also a product of this mm -hmm. household experience. He was the try to be peacekeeper, so he just wanted all the fireworks to stop. So he kind of was just like, and as a child, <laughs> as a child, if you didn't know that, did that actually help, or did it make you feel like the the no. scenario wasn't actually being acknowledged and it wasn't actually yeah, being dealt? Yeah, I with. wasn't being heard. That I should just stop. So yeah, it wasn't. He wanted his peace, um, and I'm sure he couldn't understand what was going on. <laughs> um, so most of the time, he was just trying to keep the peace and keep us um, together apart. So. so in the love and forgiveness of the mother, there's also an aspect of actually recognizing that your father did the best he knew how at mm -hmm. the time, but in fact wasn't as, because I've known you've often shared, uh, that, you know, you kind of had your father as your, 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 your rock, your, your mm -hmm. the go-to person because he was the peacekeeper, he was the, the kind one or the gentle one, but in fact because he was also enabling the scenario, he, he also couldn't really give you the love and support because he too wasn't necessarily standing up or dealing with the household relationships, uh, right. his own relationship with his wife, and, and wasn't necessarily the strongest individual after all, even though in, in the spectrum he was the strongest person you knew as a child, but right. in fact it wasn't necessarily... Um, but it ended with my mom. <laughs> It was like um, he could handle just about anything except for her wrath, and that is where it stopped. You know, he didn't say anything bad about her, or fight with her, or say anything against her, or go against her. Even if it didn't make sense, you had to do what she said. So, so in that scenario as a child, all you see is the perpetuation of what's uncomfortable, mm -hmm. because nobody's actually addressing the the elephant in the room as as we, you know metaphorically say is that nobody was really dealing with it. It was just um, codependently keeping it alive and alive and alive, but not actually stopping long enough to say this is not necessarily empowering behavior and you need to make changes. I don't think they had even, they even had those words, <laughs> empowering behavior, what is that? Um, it was just going through life, making it the best you could. There were never discussions about, you know, behavior and how you treat people and, and things like that. So it, So do you feel in a way as a child you got lost in the midst of that non acknowledgement? Maybe so. Um I always felt like I was kind of in my own world anyway and I was frequently in trouble and I had no clue why. <laughs> so looking back on it now I see some of the instances why they thought I was so weird, but um, yeah, I think I wasn't heard, so I just kind of created my own little thing and accepted that they weren't going to hear me. And fast forward into your teenage years, your early adult years, did in a way that that suppression, that uh, that that exclusion, you you excluding yourself from the reality that wasn't resolving, did that then? cause you to run more into a, not a fantasy world, but in your own little, like, you weren't heard, so why bother to speak? You, you weren't 
recognize, so you you made yourself smaller as it were um, in many aspects yeah, of your life. Yeah, I, I never thought of it that way, but yes. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I was very quiet and shy and um, then in college I was kind of like the wild unruly child, but still in one-on-one -on -one relationships I was quiet. The one that was a peacekeeper, the one that behaved appropriately, the one that yes, in didn't the, express in herself. the right situations, I did what was expected and marched. And which, again, in a way, if we also know of you, is the independent streak of you <laughs> that really went counter to your own inner nature, which is, in a way, has been, been striving to come back out as the full-fledged you, because you do have a sense of, of independence and a sense mm -hmm. of of self-awareness, and it's only probably in the recent years that you've actually been able to express yourself in more uh, genuine terms for mm -hmm. you. And, and thankfully, like you said, you got to deal with it with your, your mother and in certain ways with your father. Um, would you encourage um, people to look at, <laughs> perhaps look at their dynamics, their family dynamics, um, uh, in some way that would say perhaps help them avert what you experienced? Absolutely. By kind of forgiving myself and forgiving my mother, I was able to then look back and see why some of the things that happened happened and my part in them and look at my dad's part in the little scenario and understand why some of the things happen and not that it made it better, but understanding it, I was able to to say, oh, that's what happened, and then move on. And not but instead of having a resentment reaction, right. you're looking at the memories with really an unconditional... Right, and before I worked things out with my mother, I couldn't even look back at that. I wasn't able to even remember it. So or if you did look at it I, at any level, yeah, it was such a strong mad. energy reaction. <laughs> um, since we brought up your father, what would that be then um, for an understanding of like forgiving your father for the role he played? Mm -hmm. um, We've kind of glossed over that over the years, but in yeah, I never really blamed him. Although, you know, through his codependent enabling kind of enabling, yeah, I always wondered why he put up with it. You know, why why didn't he leave? But. Um, you know, I guess I understand coming from where he came from, why. Um, I wish it had been different, but I'm glad we all worked our issues out and can move on, so. So do you forgive him? I do. I forgive everybody, my mom, my dad, myself. I, and you know, one of the things that we find with love and forgiveness, when you go to this level, the communication changes rather dramatically within ourselves, our own mm -hmm. inner dialogue, but of course the way we approach, um, you know, others, particularly family members, we, you know, the more real we become with ourselves with love, the more we accept ourselves, then that is really how we then express ourselves mm -hmm. so differently and have a more powerful impact. Um, as a mother, as a daughter, as a mother, um, as a woman who is finding your, your personal voice, your own personal empowerment, as an independent professional, all these various things that you have created mm -hmm. for your life, what would you like to share with the, the viewing audience that, that you know, say speaks to the, the young ladies out there, the, the, uh, the mothers out there, the, the grandmothers out there? In other words, you know, generationally, um, why love begins with you? Why unconditional love? Why forgiveness? What, what really, you know, mm -hmm. what's been the biggest value, as it were, for doing the hard work? In other words, going in and mm -hmm. really, you know, facing your own inner self and accepting, releasing, choosing to look at life differently. What would, what would be your inspiration to the viewing audience out there? I guess because when you really truly get to the point where you can say you love yourself and mean it, um, everything becomes a little bit easier to not be judgmental, to trust yourself and follow your gut, um, to respect yourself enough to make 
certain decisions and choices and not care or not be swayed by what everybody else wants or what everybody else thinks you should do or or what your mom thinks you should do or be or um, it just it kind of sets you free so it's definitely um, it's freeing and it takes away all the pressure from outside yourself to be something that you don't want to be or that you think you are supposed to be. Sure. Well, one of the things that we often you know, discuss with the Love Foundation and Unconditional Love, the Love Begins With Me film project is that, yes, we do have these, these uh, transformational moments in our lives and we are orchestrating it more than we realize. And for those that, you know, kind of perhaps get to the bottom of the barrel of their life or maybe they don't have to go that far and go that deep, but they, they, they have that inner sense that, you know, for my own inner peace, I need to make these changes. Mm -hmm. You get to have, you know, in, in a lifetime, you know, some perhaps transformational moments that are truly life-altering, trajectory-changing kind of experiences. And they're all the moments after that transformational moment. So, yes, you have that, that understanding of unconditional love and forgiveness. Or you've also then realized that this isn't something you turn on, turn off. You turn on, it's magically always there. No. You, you get to, you know, we often use the word practice, but we get to play <laughs> with unconditional love and forgiveness, mm -hmm. you know, with each subsequent moment. And, you know, would you say that it's gotten easier since that time period to, to stay in that energy of love? It, it gets easier because you see the results. Um, you know, with my mother, obviously, like the first week was not totally easy because she still made those comments and I fought the urge to react. Kind of like um, an echo yeah. from the old residual self. Yeah, and, it, and it, so it took a little bit of time, but then it got easier and easier. And now, you know, people are going to say stuff to you that would upset you or is mean, um, or you're going to experience things that are not pleasant. But when you learn that it's all controlled in your heart yourself, um, it gives you more control over your life. So you're a much freer, lighter, happier person. So you're really a, a spokesperson and an advocate of yes. doing, doing, yes. <laughs> do doing, it. The, doing, do it, doing, doing the forgiveness, <laughs> doing the release, doing the love. And because you do it, you know, you, you say you're forgiving everybody else, but it really is forgiving yourself and it happens in you. And by fixing you, it, it really does spread out to the world the world around you and it affects them because if someone's mean to you and you don't react and it doesn't work eventually they're going to stop or change or notice and so you've affected them in a little positive way too so so the 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 love it's something you've taken into your professional work also absolutely and where you're, where you're not directly family, but people that you know on a regular basis, um, how has that changed your interaction with, say, coworkers, bosses, clients? Um, you know, you, we can talk about going the every day to day mm -hmm. thing, you know, where we move around, but we do spend oftentimes a third of our life, if not more, yeah. in the working environment. Well, everybody knows difficult people. And um, were so you one of them at one point? <laughs> could be, could be. <laughs> um, but when you deal with those difficult people, you can look at them as people that are going through their own stuff and you don't know what's happening in their life. And by showing them the love, you can affect them and cause change and cause them to not be maybe so ugly or, or mean. And even though you might not say something or do something and then notice an immediate change in them, it does happen. So you really can go through the world impacting everyone around you, whether you know them and, or not. And, and right, and in this case, right. I think the transformational pivotal moment of, of this particular event that, that we uh, you know, have talked about, you were a certain way with certain reactions to pretty much everything based on something that you'd carried, trialed forward and just let it kind of snowball. Once you let it all go and released it and, and basically freed yourself from it, your impact has subsequently been much more empowering mm -hmm. because you're not coming from that reactionary, angry, 
um, resentful space, you're actually coming from this more loving, compassionate, giving kindness space. Mm -hmm. Now, we all know that, you know, those that know, you've always been that way, but mm. the, the overwhelming metaphorical program was really this underlying current that was always, you know, we, we say tied to your mother, but in many ways it was your own no, self-inner criticism. If someone pushed one of those buttons that triggered that memory, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't really matter. No. We, we, we're using the symbology of your mother in this case, but in fact, whatever was, right. um, however you learn to, to engage, protect, interact, you're, you know, right. it, it covered everything. Um, again, why we, we are such proponents of this love begins with me is when we realize that inner love, our impact is so much greater and so much more far-reaching. It really does begin with me. It begins with each of us. And it's shocking how much, you know, people say, as one person, what can I do? A lot to everybody that you know. You can do a lot just by learning to love yourself and learning to love them and allow them. Well, one of the, the comments that we will get from time to time is, is people that have not necessarily um, understood unconditional love or coming from you know uh, different perspectives and models, they'll often they'd rather immediately think that you know coming from unconditional love is a real pushover, like we're just going to walk away from everything and never deal with anything. When in fact that's not really true. That the real no. work is the inside work where we're actually really going within and, and experiencing it. So for those that would um, say maybe even never heard of unconditional love. And I'm sure when we first met you, <laughs> the idea of unconditional love wasn't even in your, your frame of reference, but you've heard it enough over the years and had mm -hmm. the applicable experience. How would you um, share for those, uh, we've said you, you, know, you love yourself unconditionally, but could you give a little bit of a, of a definition as it were, what unconditional love means? I mean, we talk about compassion and kindness, but in your your day-to-day moment to moment map question how do you kind of address this as a as a life mantra an inner life mantra you know with these these types of words um just really reminding myself to love myself and honor what i want and what i am and honor the person i am don't beat myself up and through that also don't mentally beat other people up because they have their struggles just like we all do and um, by accepting other people as they are and not beating myself up um, really makes a difference. And it's got to start inside yourself. So if you love and, and you're able to give love to someone who's maybe at that moment not so deserving, um, not so happy, um, it makes you a better person. And ultimately, even though it might not be immediate, it will get to them. And if you're coming from that intention, you may never actually even see the results of that, that seed of love. But that that's okay. If they go home and don't kick their dog, yeah. then I've succeeded. <laughs> and you don't necessarily need to know about it. No. You just trust that you shared your, your, your compassion, your kindness, your empathy. Right. Well, it's certainly been a very great pleasure to not only have you here today sharing you know, your story, it's also been a great joy to watch your journey unfold and see you um, as part of the many things you've already been looking at in life mm -hmm. to take the incorporation of unconditional love into your world and and really become a living breathing example of what love means when mm -hmm. we say love begins with me so we thank you for the well, journey and thank, thank you very friendship. much for um, it's my honor and um, all I can say is thank you for getting me there and it's definitely worth it and any any um, parting encouraging words to our viewing audience love yourself unconditionally unconditionally <laughs> well thank you and for those of you um, you know you can find out more about us at love begins with me our film project at the love foundation.com that's our nonprofit the love foundation.com come visit us and let us know how you are sharing your understanding of love in your life.